Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Alec. I am over here at Churn Zero. Going to give everyone a couple minutes to join, uh, or maybe you know 30, 60 seconds as people download the GoToWebinar here. Thanks for taking some time out of your day. Take a look here. Right. Numbers creeping up. We'll give it another 30 seconds here. Okay. All righty, let's, let's go ahead and dive into it. Just uh, going to start off with a quick introduction. First of all, uh, appreciate everyone joining. Today's webinar, as I'm sure you know, is around automation for high-touch customers. So let me go ahead and advance the screens here. Awesome. So as for myself, wanted to do a quick intro here. Uh, my name is Alec Schadelbauer. I'm an account executive here at Churn Zero, uh, which means I have the pleasure of speaking with a ton of awesome CS members and leaders on a weekly basis about you know overall processes and goals. Um, you know I've been here for about a year, which at this point sounds kind of crazy. It's been a heck of a year, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, but you know, definitely wouldn't wouldn't trade my kind of journey with Churn Zero for anything. Really excited for for what's to come as well. Um, and again, I know there's a lot of things that you all could be doing in the middle of your Tuesday here. So definitely appreciate you spending a little bit of time with with me. So for today, uh, as far as an agenda goes, just to lay that out, a few key areas that I wanted to touch on. Um, really wanted to start off by talking a little bit about shifting the way that we view uh, the word automation. Um, as high touch customer success leaders, right? From there, I wanna dive into some actual real world examples of how C high touch CS teams are utilizing automation to actually make their jobs easier and, and continue to keep their customers happy. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how we can help you stay in the know with what's going on with your customer base, creating and utilizing uh, standardized and repeatable processes and how you can help your team be more agile um, when things might not go 100% to plan. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. I'm actually going to start with a poll question. Um, so I wanted to just get a sense of the room, right? You know, uh, as far as the definition of high touch, it's gonna be, you know, be different for everyone. Um, you know, the, for some people it's a CSM team, for some people they have account managers, client success managers, what I wanted to get a sense of is um, how many customers are you all working with per rep? Is it less than 15? Is it somewhere in the 16 to 30 range? Or do you all have 30 uh, or more accounts per rep? Just wanted to get a quick idea of what that looks like so we can uh, use that as we move forward. So I'll give everyone a few seconds here. I believe the poll is open. So we'll let those answers trickle in. Another 10 seconds or so here. All right, getting some good responses. Looks like we're almost split even, so we can go ahead and maybe cut the, the poll for now. Um, and what I'm seeing, and hopefully you all are seeing this as well, um, here, let me see, yeah. So it looks like you know around 39% of you said 15 people or less uh, customers, excuse me, that each rep is managing, and around 52% said 30 or more. Um, that kind of falls right in line, right? Pretty pretty split as far as that goes. That's going to definitely help me as I go through the rest of this content today. So as far as you know, hopping into some of this, right? I probably don't need to tell you this, but 
your job in, in customer success or customer success leadership um, is one that can be definitely demanding, right? There's a lot of, of needs that need to be covered and customer revenue that's really depending on, on your level of service. Um, so just because your team is, be con is considered high touch um, and you might have you know, less than 15 or somewhere in the realm of 30 customers, definitely doesn't mean that uh, there's less work to be done than someone that might have hundreds of customers that they're managing. And what we're looking at here is our idea of customer success, right? So of course, this is gonna vary from team to team, but general idea kind of stands. So your sales team, whether it's a product or service that uh, they're, they're utilizing is, uh, is sold. And at that point, there's some sort of an onboarding phase after which your team is responsible for driving adoption, driving engagement, whatever that means for you. And then obviously along the way, your team might also be responsible for expanding that recurring revenue right within those accounts. Uh, but the main idea is that the end goal within this is we want to have done a good enough job and have the customer see enough value that they end up renewing with your product or service, after which the process starts all over again. So, you know, obviously as a high touch team with a handful of accounts um, that are likely making up a good portion of that recurring revenue, your team is responsible for doing this all while providing and ensuring that one-to-one -one nature of the relationship. Um, so I have the privilege of speaking, like I mentioned, you know, anywhere from 20 to 40 customer success leaders per month. And a good portion of those operate a, a high touch customer success team with a handful of high, you know, ACV customers. And one thing that I've noticed and, you know, our team has noticed in speaking with some of them is the overall sense of hesitance or in some cases fear around the concept of automation. So let's talk a little bit about that. You know, the concept of, of working smarter, not harder at this point, very cliche. I'm sure you've heard it in a lot of different places, but it does apply to this topic very, very nicely. Um, I was doing a little bit of research when kind of preparing for this, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Rick Adams. Uh, but for those of you that, that might not know him, uh, he is a you know, consultant, trainer, author in the customer success space, puts out a ton of great content uh, in the CS realm. Definitely recommend checking him out. In episode 50 of his customer success rants and musings series, he discussed the idea of you know, automated CS is not lower quality CS. This one really stood out to me. Um, you know, one of the key points of his argument centered around how providing automated services can reduce the load elsewhere, which will actually better enable, you know, the service for your customers that actually do need that handholding one-to-one -one approach. And he also, something I thought was really interesting, he also challenges the, the CS teams that, you know, uh, to take a step back and actually look and see does this customer need the hands-on, one-to-one, us doing everything for them approach? Or are there actually areas where they might prefer more of a DIY, do-it-yourself approach in certain areas of the process? You know, maybe if our cavemen friends here had uh, had some of this same, similar mindset, you know, as Rick, uh, they wouldn't have listened to, or they would have listened to their friend here on the left and, and freed up some time by implementing those, those circular wheels, which we all know would work a lot better. So here's you know, kind of my challenge to you. And here's what, um, you know, the, the more and more I tried to think of themes for today's webinar, the more this one kept just coming back to me. Uh, and apologies for anyone that, that might not be sports fans, basketball fans, but I think this is gonna be a really powerful analogy for you all. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the play that we're looking at on a loop right now, uh, it's actually called an alley-oop. It's a, pl a play in basketball. High level concept of it is, you know, involves two players. One player is gonna be passing the ball um, somewhere near the rim. And the other player at the same time is gonna be jumping, catching the ball near the rim and finishing the play with a slam dunk. So not to get into specifics here, and I might be digressing a little, but we're watching the great Vince Carter, one of the best dunkers of, of all time. But the key idea of the alley-oop is that, you know, the ball is meeting the jumping player exactly where they need to be, rather than the player having to jump uh, and figure out, you know, how to get the ball there. And the idea of automation for customer success teams is very similar, right? 
the idea is not to do the job for you, but rather meet you where you should be to allow you to be the star for your customer success teams and slam dunk the ball or renew the customer or whatever the goal you're looking to achieve is. Translating that a little bit further, you know, providing your CS team with deeper automated insights into the customer behavior can lead to an easier experience, not only for you, but also for your customer in general. Um, and I'm definitely not saying that, you know, all high touch customer success, customer success teams have the mindset that automation isn't for them. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are already using sort of this alley-oop method and, and implementing, uh, implementing automation where it makes sense in the process. But my hope is for that, you know, those of you that might not have tried it or those of you that are against it, is that you walk away today with a few ideas of how you might be able to implement it. And with that being said, uh, I do have one more poll for you because I am curious as far as how many of you have actually tried to implement this in your daily you know, CS processes? So how many have attempted to implement some sort of automation in your CS process today? So obviously I'm not saying how many of you have a dedicated customer success platform necessarily. You can do this through your, your CRM. Maybe you're automating some processes through there or maybe you're you know, piggybacking off your sales team and using something like a sales loft or an outreach or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to implement this. I was curious to see kind of what the what the uh, thought around it was. So we'll give everyone a few more seconds. Looks like we got a good amount of results in so far. Give uh, 10 more seconds here. All right. We can go ahead and let's cut that one. So it looks like, uh, yeah, and this is kind of what I was expecting because there's a lot of different ways to automate. 83% of you have attempted some sort of automation within the process. 17% have not. Um, so like I mentioned, let's see, let's dive into it a little bit deeper and you know see what uh, some actual key takeaways here could be. Um, so as far as you know, what we're going to touch on today, I, I want some some actionable takeaways, and I'm going to utilize some some stories that we've heard from our end as well, as far as high touch automation and, and proven methods around that. So you know, one of the main reasons that customer success as a profession was created, um, you know, other than switching to more of a subscription driven world was to be more proactive with customers rather than reactive. You know, we had come from a world of customer support where everything was reactive and we were reacting to things as they came in. Um, in order to be more proactive, you know, one thing we need to know is anything good or bad that might need our attention, you know, right at this second and having that at the top of our, of our mind here. One example of how high touch teams are really staying in the know and uh, you know being where they need to be with the, the background knowledge on their customers is through the use of real time alerts. So similar to the way that your bank app might send you a notification when a payment is due in the next few days. You could also be notified with actionable items within your book of business on how your customers are interacting or engaging. So think about specific items that you would wanna be alerted of you know, within your customer base. Uh, maybe a high value customer hasn't logged into your solution this week. Maybe there's a renewal coming up in 90 days for that customer uh, or even something positive you might want to know. Maybe they gave you a great NPS uh, result or feedback and you want to be able to thank them for that result on your next call that you have with them. Taking it a step further, you know, auto, -gener auto generating timely tasks based on specific triggers has proven to be very successful for high touch teams as well. So for example, you know, your team handles upsells or is involved with identifying them in some way. Having a list of tasks triggered when that upsell behavior is noticed without having to go dig through reports, usage reports, CRM reports, um, or even wait for that customer to actually tell you when they think they might be ready for some sort of upsell. Having that you know, proactively coming to your attention is something that a lot of teams are seeing a lot of value with. You know, similarly, auto-generating daily tasks uh, based on each CSM's book of business is a great way that customer success teams are starting their day to actually take action here. 
So I'm not sure how many of you are, are Outlook, you know, Office 365 users compared to Gmail. I'm sure there's probably a 50-50 there, but they have this new feature I've been utilizing a lot um, where they'll basically send me a list of follow-up items based on language, language that I used in my previous emails. So let's say, you know, I send an email on Monday to someone that says, um, I'll follow up with you on Friday. Now every, you know, on that Friday when that comes, um, I will get a notification uh, in real time saying, hey, you might want to follow up with this person because on Monday you said you'd follow up with them on Friday. I'd be lying if I said that didn't save me a few times because, you know, I'm not always uh, as good as, as on the organization side as I should be. But, you know, we're seeing a similar sort of light bulb go off with high touch teams in customer success with the automation of daily to do's or daily tasks, right? To give you a specific example of a team that did this, Mineral Tree, they're a customer of Turn Zeros. Um, they're a high touch customer success team and they're a payment platform that helps automate um, you know, invoice to pay processes. And they were kind of dealing with, with one big problem uh, when they came on board and that was you know, their, their CSMs would start their day, sit down with their cup of Starbucks or, or Dunkin'. I'm personally a Dunkin' guy, but you know, that's, uh, I'm digressing again a little bit there. But they wouldn't know how to start their day, right? They had um, you know, data all over the place as far as what they could be approaching. Maybe they had a QBR later that day or you know, a few one-on-one -on -one sessions with customers. Uh, they weren't exactly sure what to start their day with. So when they implemented Churn Zero, they really took advantage of the auto-generated to-do list for each individual CSM based on their specific book of business. Um, so they were now you know, living in a world where real-time actionable items were pushed to the top of their list based on what they should action first. Again, the idea here is you know, these, these items were pushed to the, the top of their list based on their interaction with their solution but each individual CSM could take action accordingly. So it's not something that, you know, the automation was doing the job for them. They're just kind of, you know, putting them where they need to be so they can have things not slip through the cracks. Standardizing processes and, you know, uh, having repeatable processes in place, <clears throat> excuse me, is also, you know, a key to, to success in just about everything. So think about, every actor, every artist, athlete, et cetera, you know, that's made it big in their respective profession, they'll probably tip their hats to the idea of consistency and repeatable behaviors, right? So to give you a personal example of my consistency, um, and I'm sure everyone can relate to this, but you know, if I wanna get up early before work and go on a run or get outside and move around or go to the gym, I'm much more likely to do so if I lay out my clothes the night before. Right, waking up early isn't always easy, especially not for me, who's probably setting four to five alarms every morning. But it does make it easier when I take any manual effort, like deciding what clothes to wear, out of the equation. Right, I know that once I get out the door, I'm going to be fine. But it's that time in between waking up and getting out the door that I need to, to you know, help automate a little bit, if you will. So the same thing can kind of be true with, with customer success efforts. Let's take onboarding, for example. You know, almost every CS leader I speak with has different segments of customers, uh, maybe bucketed by MRR or product type or location or something like that. And each one goes through a different type of onboarding process based on that. Having to reinvent the wheel, sort of similar to our, our caveman, caveman friend earlier in the presentation, can lead to unforeseen errors, missed opportunities, and things like this, you know, when bringing new customers on board. So the way automation can play a big role here is by automatically creating specific tasks that need to be completed by your team, and even items that need to be completed by the customer as well at different parts of the onboarding process. Um, so having these tasks automatically generated and mapped out can give your team the ability to plan and understand what needs to be accomplished uh, by who and when. You know, another good proven example that I can use here is one of Churn Zero's customers, Inflow Communications, who, you know, came in initially lacking that step-by-step -step structure for the onboarding process. They would kind of take everything by the seat of their pants and, and just go with it. One thing that they were able to do is, you know, by implementing these, these auto-generated tasks at different parts of the onboarding process, 
they were actually able to cut their onboarding time in half so that they could spend more time on the, the customer facing task that they needed to spend more time on. And the last kind of key point I wanted to highlight for today is um, you know, the, the idea of being agile in customer success. Definitely not a secret that agility is key for any customer success team. Um, and as much as we hope and we pray, uh, unfortunately, not everything always goes 100% according to plan when managing a book of high value customers. You know, sometimes despite our best efforts, something's always going to come out of left field. Um, and, but, you know, it's a sign of highly effective customer success teams uh, when they have processes in place for these types of situations. So let me give you like a few specific examples, right? And you can see on the graphic here, but maybe we have our list of auto-generated tasks for a specific area of the onboarding process like we were just talking about, uh, but a customer holdup could be preventing us from being able to advance in the onboarding process. Sort of the natural reaction of you know, any CSM would be maybe, okay, I'm gonna go type up an email, I'm gonna pull in data from these different places, maybe I'll give them a phone call. Um, but you know, something that we've really noticed as far as automating this process that's been helpful for, for these types of teams is having these emails already pre-generated for them with the necessary key data points to actually talk to the customer about why this specific task is important. So you can see the example of the email on your screen here uh, where we're pulling in merge fields, making it feel very tailored and one-to-one. -one. Um, but adding another layer to this you know, you can also target different types of users within your customer's organization uh, with different emails as well, right? So maybe the first email will go to your end user, whereas as you complete, continue to go on with the emails, you might pull in some managers and some admins on the account as well. To dive into, you know, everyone's least favorite example, but one that we've probably all experienced, now your executive sponsor leaves the organization. We've all been through it where, you know, we develop a good relationship with someone and they end up leaving. Kind of throws a wrench in things, right? Again, maybe the first step here to utilize automation would be to have a, a workflow uh, triggered based on that. And maybe the first step could be a task assigned to the CSM with specific instructions on how to approach the situation. Uh, maybe as we continue to go down the line, same way we just talked about, an auto-generated email can be drafted for that CSM to be sent to the new champion and maybe outline some of the goals that you've achieved, some things you, you know, that were left out for the new champion, and kind of the value that, that the old champion was seeing in the solution. So kind of summarizing this, right, having a preloaded plan of attack for unforeseen situations can narrow the time to get back on track which accomplishes our number one goal as, as customer success leaders, right? Which is providing the customer with the most seamless customer experience possible. So that is everything I had to touch on from a high level today to give you all just a couple key takeaways. And hopefully, you know, my goal and my challenge uh, came to fruition here as far as having you all take a few things away from this. But the first thing, first key takeaway, automation doesn't have to be scary. You know, you all prove that you already are in the, the mindset of there's probably something that we can do with automation through our poll in the beginning. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of ways that this can make your team's lives easier and also your customers experience a lot better as well. Um, second one is, you know, arm your team with repeatable processes. We talked a little bit about the power of consistency and how this can lead to less slipping through the, the cracks. And then finally, you know, more assisted CS insights will lead to a better customer experience. Again, if there's anything that we strive for as high touch teams or CS teams in general, it's you know, that we want the customer to have the best experience possible. So providing your team with all the insights to again, meet them at the rim where they need to be, um, is gonna help us get to that goal the quickest. So again, uh, I appreciate everyone joining today. I hope you all took something away and I'm going to go ahead and shift into a Q&A here.
right. And I did get one. Um, it looks like, how would you recommend utilizing email automation without feeling like we're spamming our customers? This is a great question um, because I think this is kind of the fear behind automation in general, right? Um, high touch teams kind of naturally gravitate away from the email automation because they'll feel like, uh, you know, we don't want to spam our customers. We don't want to be like all those other organizations that just send a million emails. Speaking specifically from a, a churn zero standpoint, you know, we have the concept of review required, which will allow you um, rather than just blasting out that email, those emails that we were talking about before, to actually be you know, generated without being sent, right? So that'll be kind of in the CSM's view, but something that they can go into, add some more um, customization to it before actually sending it out. Hopefully that helped with that one. How do you automate your daily work? Great question. Um, I I am on the sales side, so I am you know definitely a, a heavy CRM user. So I try to automate there as much as I can. But you know I'm taking away a lot of good things from my own CS team as well, um, as far as auto generating tasks, triggers, things like that. Happy to to answer more of these over email as well. I know uh, we're going to be sending out this recording and we'll make sure to get to all your questions as well. Um, but again, I really appreciate everyone hopping on today. Thanks again for the time and looking forward to hopefully connecting with some of you down the line here. Hope everyone has a great rest of your Tuesday.